two seconds, I'm going to take a quick selfie. Alright, so, um, I'm James, I'm just going to dive right in, okay? Uh, it's going to be an interesting topic, but if you stick with me, I think that we can get through it, right? So, how the government released COVID-19 <laughs> to control the people, alright? I think I have a compelling argument, you're going to like it, okay? <laughs> So, give yourself control, right? 2020 and 2021 showed us how easy it is for the government to control our lives, right? And when you agree with it, it's great. But what if you don't agree with it? We had lockdowns where people couldn't leave their homes. Mask mandates, people weren't allowed to go inside restaurants. Vaccine mandates, people are having to change entire career positions. Travel bans, people couldn't see their families, they couldn't go out of the country, families were split up. So what do you do? <laughs> you create freedom building assets. We're talking bunkers. We're talking food stores. I'm just kidding. I, I saw a couple people at the back getting some tinfoil out, so. I decided we will talk about why Airbnbs are straight fire. <laughs> that was really just a gauge for my next talk. <laughs> now people are laughing, so I'm like, okay, that's not serious. <laughs> so a little bit about me. Uh, I'm a CODA. That means that um, both my parents are deaf. And um, so I grew up in a household where sign language was my first language. And um, as a kid, you're calling the doctors, you're making appointments, you're doing all the stuff for yourself, really, right? I think that that kind of changed the way that I grew up compared to a lot of other people my age, especially. A uh, single parent house, so my parents divorced when I was a kid, and uh, my dad ended up passing away when I was 12. And so um, it was a very humble upbringing. My mom, her peak was like 9.50 an hour, working third shifts at Walmart. And so we had utilities cut off, water cut off, things like that, right? And uh, you would think that that would give me a nice base understanding of money. I was astronomically good at wasting money, right? So any money that came in, I would blow it because I was so worried about looking poor that I was so focused on overspending every dollar that came in to just show people that I wasn't actually poor, right? And this peaked when my card got declined at a red box. <laughs> like, not kidding. Like, so I was, on a, I was on a date with my now wife, and um, my card got declined at a red box. I didn't have a dollar seven in my account, right? And there was no savings to transfer from or anything like that. I told her at the time, I said, my card's messed up. I don't know what's going on, right? <laughs> I knew damn well what was going on, right? But I couldn't admit to her that. So I found Mr. May Mustache in July of 2016, changed my life. Right? We bought our first rental in 2017, and then we retired in 2019 with 10 rental units. Um, and it's a very comprehensive list. Thank you. It's a comprehensive about me. I'm here talking at Camp Fire right now. So. so what are STRs and Airbnb? So STR is short-term rental. They're rentals that are furnished rentals. You can rent them nightly, weekly, monthly. Monthly starts to get into kind of a medium term, but um, that's the difference between a short-term rental and like an Airbnb. So that's like, Airbnb is a site for short-term rentals. Uh, it's the most popular marketplace uh, for people to find short-term rentals. Airbnb, while it's the largest lodging company, one of the largest lodging companies in the world, doesn't own a single property, right? They outsource that. And they are just there to facilitate the payments, the bookings, the messaging, and all that stuff between the owners and the guests. So what can you rent? And this is going to go quickly in an order of like most private to least private and some outlandish things, right? Uh, so private homes and condos, that's pretty easy. Um, you can rent a basement, a garage, or an attic apartment like mother-in-law suites. You can even rent Airstreams. I really tried to shoehorn as much STRs as I could in this. I don't know if you could tell, right? Uh, sailboats, 
tree houses, and you can even rent a cave on Airbnb. People have outfitted caves with like TVs and lighting and all this kind of crazy stuff. Uh, you can even rent space in your yard to camp. You can rent a private room in a shared house. And we've even seen one of the most interesting listings was a shared room in a house. So you're sleeping on an air mattress next to the person sleeping in their bed, right? <laughs> Not for me, but somebody might book it, you know? <laughs> exactly. So people do it. It's a thing. So the perks of short-term rentals. So they have a higher ROI. There's more diversification. And I'm going to dive deeper into these in a second. Uh, you get more control. There are less legal issues overall and the ability to utilize the personal space for yourself and there are surprise perks, right? So I'm going to skip the ROI for now because I know all the nerds in the audience will quit paying attention when I go over the numbers. So I'm going to save that for last. Like that's the fun part. So diversification. So having multiple streams of income just within our rentals uh, helps us sleep better at night. Um, and so with the potential volatility of Airbnbs, the way that we treat our short-term rentals are like our stocks in our portfolio and our long-term rentals, we treat as our bonds because they're a little more stable in downturns and things like that. Um, so for instance, with COVID happening, you know, a lot of people lost a lot of bookings. And so short-term rentals weren't exactly, uh, the best thing to have at that time, depending on where you were. Next thing you know, short-term rentals are huge because people are trying to get out of cities. They're trying to staycation. They're doing all these different things. So you definitely get more control over a short-term rental and a long-term rental. Uh, I am a control freak, right? I can't help it. That's why I like real estate more than the index, even though we invest in uh, index funds. I prefer to be able to control where I'm buying, what I'm doing to the place, all that stuff, my tenants, everything, if I can help it. So a biggest difference to me is nightly prices versus yearly leases. So a long-term tenant, I can only adjust their price once a year. And with an Airbnb, I can adjust the prices very quickly, right? I can change the price for next week if I want to, if it's not booked. Um, and so being able to adjust with the market is very helpful. Um, a lot of our tenants are below market and I can't do anything about it until the year is up. And then I hope that I've raced it enough to meet the next year. Consistent cleanings is a big part of it. So having someone come into the place, a professional person coming in and making sure that the life of the flooring is better, you know, all the appliances are cleaner. Um, I know the, how the place is treated. And so because of that, I can put nicer things in and not feel as bad about it. There are quicker maintenance responses. So I don't have to schedule uh, a time to meet up with a tenant or to make sure that it coordinates with them. Um, I can actually just block off a day, have a maintenance person come in. And if someone submits a maintenance request and the other part of it is because the cleaners are there so often, they're looking under cabinets, they're seeing all the things. And so I have a go-to person that essentially tells me anything that's wrong with the property. And I get to put in higher quality furnishings and appliances. Um, and so that's something that the ROI might not be there for a long-term rental, but for a short-term rental, I can put better stainless steel appliances in. I can do granite countertops. I can do things like that that might not change the price of a long-term rentals price per month, right? So I put granite in, I might can charge $5 more a month, maybe. I mean, like, how do you quantify that? It's tough. So with a short-term rental, I can make that decision a lot easier. And higher vacancy rates for less wear and tear on properties. This is an interesting portion of it. So I can raise my nightly prices to bake in a vacancy rate. So between September of 2019 and March of 2020, we had three vacant nights. And that's way too booked up, right? That's the wrong end of it. That means my prices were way too low. So if I raise the price, I'll end up getting just as much money, if not more, and I'll end up baking in a vacancy rate. So there's less wear and tear on the property. There's less wear and tear on the furniture and things like that. Um, and my utility rates are gonna be lower, so. There are less legal issues uh, overall, I would say. Typically, there are less legal issues. And that's just part of a long-term rental. There is a chance that you're going to have to evict someone, right? So you're going to have to deal with evictions due to non-payment. You're going to have a lease expiration and people may overstay. Um, violations of the lease agreement and tenants destroying property, right? So with the long-term, I have a lease that I have to adhere to. With a short-term rental, there are no lease agreements, right? I don't interact with any of these people. They don't pay me anything. They pay Airbnb or whatever company that I use. Um, to facilitate the short-term rental. So I'm not having to have any lease agreements that I have to adhere to. Um, and when their time is up, they leave. There's nothing keeping them there, right? I don't have to go through a court system to get anybody out. 
um, because people typically don't ever stay. They know it's a short-term rental. They've only paid for these dates. Personal use. This was the biggest reason why we chose to do Airbnb, right? Um, we had all long-term rentals and we were getting ready to move overseas and we sold off all of our stuff. We were like, let's get rid of everything. We're getting ready to move. We had a yard sale. I was cutting deals left and right. Like I was giving shit away. Like you buy this, I'll give you a free couch. Like I was just <laughs> getting rid of stuff. And people were like, don't give me that. I bought a pair of shoes. Like, <laughs> so we were trying to get rid of everything. And funnily enough, we had to turn around and buy all that stuff back because we decided let's try an Airbnb, right? Like, so when we come to a place, we can stay in there. Right? When we're traveling, we can rent it out and make money on it and make more than a long-term rental would. But when we're in town, we can block it off for a few nights, a few weeks, a few months, and we can stay there. We can also have family and friends come and use it. Right? And so that to us is the biggest benefit of Airbnb with traveling, with being kind of transient. When we're in the area, we can block it off and we stay in a place that is our own anyway. Right? We're staying somewhere that has everything that we need and we know everything about it. So the miscellaneous benefits, these are the surprise perks, right? So Airbnb arbitrage strategy, right? There is an Airbnb arbitrage that people talk about where you rent a house and then you rent it on Airbnb. That's not what I'm talking about. So if we book an Airbnb that's cheaper per night for a stay, that's cheaper per night than what our place would rent for, it makes us more money to continue traveling, right? So if, I mean, the, the math is pretty easy, but if you rent a place for $75 a night, and you, your place rents for $100 a night, it pays me $25 a night to continue doing it, right? So we love to travel. That makes it very easy choice for us to continue doing that. DIY projects. So being able to do upgrades and projects is something that I really enjoy doing, right? I like to renovate units. I don't like to do repairs on units. I want there to be a level of distinction between me and my tenants anyway, right? Um, I'm not gonna be the one showing up to do anything. But if there's a renovation that can be done, I like to do that. I like to get my hands dirty. I like to do things myself and I like to learn how to do new things anyway. So I get to take out cabinets and put in, you know, hood vents and stuff like that, that I would never do on a long-term rental because it doesn't make sense from an ROI perspective, right? It's not going to rent for more. Uh, the tenants would like it, sure, but I'm going to spend more money on it and I'm going to spend my time on it and it's not going to pay me anything back. So with this, I get an excuse to expand my horizons and do things that I would never do in a long-term rental. I get to support local businesses. This is an interesting like, way of doing it, but by hosting new people in the area, we get to share our favorite local businesses in the neighborhood with new people, right? Especially in the five community. We're not going out to eat every week, right? But I might have two different guests in a week and I get to share one spot with them and they're going all the time, right? I get to share my favorite local places. And when you're going to a new town, you're going out to eat more, right? If we were living there, we wouldn't go there once a week, right? I mean, we might, right? But uh, maybe a bar or something, right? But um, typically we're not going there that often. And so we're helping support the local businesses in our neighborhood and helping facilitate bringing new things in as well. So the finances, here's the fun part of it. So everybody knows that the biggest benefit to a short-term rental versus long-term rental is the dollars. Uh, what's that really? So this is the perfect case study because this is a duplex, right? And this is one side of the duplex. The other side is a long-term rental. This side is a short-term rental. And so it's the same location. It's the same layout. Everything is identical, right? And so we get to dive into the numbers here. So this is what it looks like, right? They're essentially the same thing. I was talking about tore down a cabinet, put a hood vent up, right? But otherwise it's the same color cabinets. It's LVP flooring, like everything about it. It's almost the same. One's furnished, one's not furnished. That's the biggest difference. So our long-term rental, the rent is 675 a month. That's below market rent, but that's what they're paying now until I can raise it in April when their lease is up. This is just the reality of what I've got to deal with. Our short-term rental, the average income per month of the past year was $2,073. Um, and that is baking in the vacancy rates, right? Like, so it would be vacant for, you know, a week, two weeks, a month, uh, sometimes less, sometimes more. So on average, we were making $2,073 a month. So the expenses, uh, PITI, so the mortgage was 175 for one side, right? I'm splitting that in half. So it's a 350 mortgage. <laughs> Um, lawn care, we cover for both sides because we don't want it to look funny. One person's mowing, one person's not. And we cover the pest control for the place. Um, and this is, a, this is like simplification for it just for the sake of numbers. Uh, you know, this isn't counting maintenance, vacancies, like stuff like that. But on a typical month, we don't really have that, honestly. 
Um, not, that's not saying we're not setting that aside, but for the sake of comparison, this is easier to do. So the expenses on short-term rentals, the first three are the exact same. We cover the utilities, we pay for the highest internet that we can get, and then the miscellaneous things are we like to leave like beer or we like to like leave supplies there. We have a coffee bar there, so we give espressos, like we got all sorts of different types of coffee that you can make, and uh, you know, toilet paper, paper towels, just miscellaneous supplies. And that's only $24 a month? Though. $24 a month, average. Yeah, yeah, you would think, but typically like it's $24 a month for all those things because a lot of people actually aren't eating there. Right? They're going out to eat, so they're not using these things, right? They're there a, like a few hours a night to go to the bathroom, brush their teeth and stuff like that. So our expenses are actually typically very low. So our profit on our long-term rental is $453, and our profit on our short-term rental is $1,669. So it's over three and a half times the comparison, right? Um, now, the higher ROI means that we get to have less properties and so that means less headaches, right? Um, and less stress, less capital expenditures. Every property you buy, like, yes, we're putting a little bit more into an Airbnb. We're having to pay to furnish it. We're having to pay for the utilities. We're having to pay for all those things. But that's much less than the cost of an acquisition of another property, right? I can have five Airbnbs that would pay for the portfolio of 15 long-term rentals, right? There are cons to Airbnb. I'm not going to sit up here and say that there aren't, right? there's definitely a higher involvement level. I am the go-to person, right? I manage all our rentals. Um, and now if someone has an issue, they message me about it, right? And the typical long-term tenant, I have them submit maintenance requests. And I only deal with them whenever I want to, right? Like I, I respond to them quickly, but it's not like something that's very pressing. With an Airbnb, I'm in the hospitality uh, industry now. I'm not a landlord anymore. So there's definitely a higher level of involvement. I have to manage the cleaners. I have to manage all the supplies, things like that. It can be less consistent. Like I had mentioned with COVID, um, you know, people canceled their bookings and people still continue to cancel bookings, right? People can't travel, like things change, places are shut down. So it can be less consistent, particularly in areas that are seasonal, right? Like Florida, it's going to be booming during the winter, but in the summers, it might not be as hot. And the same with like ski resort towns, right? They're going to be much more popular in the winter. Uh, but then there are other places that are nicer in the summer uh, up north where people go and travel to different towns. So it can be less consistent. It definitely costs more initially, right? Furnishing a place is not easy. It's not cheap, right? You have to find quality couches, quality appliances. Uh, you've got to put all the everything in there that it would take to make it a home, right? And so that costs a little bit more to do as opposed to a long-term tenant. And there are changing regulations. So we know a person personally where all of a sudden they woke up one day and their Airbnb was illegal in their part of town. And they'd had it there for a couple of years, right? And all of a sudden overnight, they couldn't Airbnb it anymore. So there are constantly changing regulations. And that makes sense as to why I said like seasonal towns, like places on the beaches, like Pigeon Forge, like the Smoky Mountains, places like that. Long or short term rentals have been there forever, right? Like that's part of it. Way before Airbnb was there, they've had short-term rentals, vacation rentals. Uh, and so that's a uh, consideration with where you want to invest. And it is definitely more customer oriented. I, might, I mentioned that earlier. Um, I have to be accessible more often for Airbnb guests than someone else, right? I have to give them suggestions on where to go, different things to do. If the coffee maker isn't working, then I've got to solve that problem, right? Um, and so it's definitely more customer oriented compared to my long-term tenants, right? If their coffee maker doesn't work, I don't deal with it. So that's why Airbnbs are straight fire. Despite the additional involvement, the additional effort involved, um, we like Airbnb. We don't have all of our properties Airbnb, and I would never suggest that, right? It's just a diversification play on our part with our long-term rentals. So just with our management strategy and how well I manage stress, I it doesn't bother me like maintenance requests. If that's like something that's going to like make you on the edge of your seat, then I wouldn't suggest it. Uh, and so for my management style, for the way that we live our life, Airbnb makes sense for us. It might not make sense for everybody. Thank you.